and we are here for week four of PPL Live here with Gino the Gent. Gonna recap week three and get us into the week four matchups of the PPL. Starting with the Argonauts falling to squad underestimated. Underestimated breaks the Argonauts 19 game Alpha Conference winning streak winning 109 to 84. The United play as a destroyer surprisingly get to two and one with a 100 to 72 win over the Baby Gas team. The Mean Machine and only for the boss combined for the highest point total of the week in a shootout as the machine scores 142 to the boss's 121. Patty's Twins gets by as the lock of the week, defeating Big C's Comeback Kids 91 to 85. And in the prestige matchup of the week, the Omega Conference champions appease the gods, defeat the Gaff Attack 135 to 108. Alrighty, and I hope everyone enjoyed week uh, three of PPL action and now we're going to get into the week four preview Congratulations to the week three leave no doubt player of the week Drew Breeze Breeze was on fire in that week three matchup against the New Orleans Saints uh, having six total touchdowns uh, four uh, passing two rushing to lead the Saints in a big, big win over the Atlanta Falcons and ATG to a prestige matchup of the week victory. We're gonna segue that into our first matchup. It appease the guys going up against Big C's comeback kids. Alrighty, ladies and gents. So the week four is underway and we've got some great PPL action coming at you. Drew Brees, of course, who was the League No Doubt Player of the Week, uh, will continue uh, those high scoring answers. It looks like the Saints are going to be forced uh, into throwing the ball because their defense is not the same defense it was last year, and that's going to really behoove Drew Brees uh, to throw the football. Uh, I like ATG's lineup this week. Of, of course, the, the usual suspects are there, Gronk, uh, Mike Evans, everyone else. Uh, Jordan Howard, should uh, I think he should get some lanes going against that Tampa Bay run defense. Um, and Chris Carson, a guy that ATG picked up on the waiver wire, um, should, should probably have a, a pretty good impact on this game against that Arizona front. That Arizona uh, team just not, does not look very uh, competitive. And I think Rob Gronkowski should bounce back uh, against the Miami Dolphins, and the Patriots as a whole will probably bounce back uh, against uh, the um, Dolphins. On the uh, comeback kid side, I don't know uh, if, they, uh, if they're lacking interest or if they're giving up and, and throwing up the white flag, but um, they haven't been very good this season. And I don't know if it's from a lack of effort or if they're just you know, not very good this year, but uh, I think it's a combination of the two. Uh, Deshaun Watson, he's continuing to be solid, if not spe uh, if unspectacular. Um, Golden Tate, uh, he's a guy that's out there you know, taking up space, but I'm looking more at the comeback kids bench. Devonta Freeman looks like he may be back this week. Uh, Jarvis Landry was a guy who had a pretty good game and should do well with uh, Baker Mayfield out there. And Kenyon Drake's also another good player that, that the comeback kids uh, are leaving on the bench, uh, which is fine. I mean, if they continue uh, to ignore their talent, they're going to just get beat every week. And, uh, you know, they'll just be a doormat to the PPL. Uh, that being said, in this matchup, I, I got uh, ATG as the lock of the week this week. I've got Appease the Gods winning 134 to 99. Moving on to our next matchup. We've got the United Players, the Destroyers, taking on the Gaff Attack. All right, the UP coming off of their uh, their uh, second win of the season. They're, they're uh, a nice uh, early season surprise. Uh, they could easily be 3-0 if it wasn't for that uh, close loss they had in week one against Patty's Twins. And, I mean, they're, they're, they're this year's comeback kids, uh, perhaps, because they're, they're making things happen, um, playing the matchups and not giving up. Uh, Tom Brady uh, should bounce back against the Miami Dolphins, uh, along with James White. It looks like uh, the, the UP's got a, a formula that they want to stick with. Um, they, they got a lot of number two receivers who do get a lot of targets. And then it looks like they want to go with receiving running backs out of the backfield, which may not be a bad call. The Rams coach has been one of the better um, plays all season long, but that's going to be interesting to see how uh, that Vikings uh, coach matches up against the uh, Rams. On the gaff side, uh, they finally kind of fell back down to earth despite the big, big projection. Uh, they weren't able to meet that. Todd Gurley was the guy, but Leonard Fournette was a late, uh, late scratch for the gaff. So that, that uh, caused some issues. And then on the other side, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, 
he's doing a good job, but he's not getting the uh, same number of um, opportunities as he was last year. And it's like Will Fuller's uh, presence is affecting D-Hop's um, production a little bit. So uh, there's going to have to be some balancing there. Uh, Zach Ertz uh, got targeted pretty heavily uh, with uh, Carson Wentz back in the lineup, and that's huge uh, news for the Gaff, and I believe that's something that's going to continue to be um, a positive for them, as well as obviously Brandon Cooks and Todd Gurley on uh, Thursday night. The Gaff is going with a lot of Thursday night plays, so I mean, hit this, that could ruin his weekend before it starts. Uh, but the Rams have looked so strong. I think that the Gaff um, is in good shape, and, and I think that they're going to win here. Although the, the uh, United players do have the coach, I think the Gaff has a lot more moving parts, um, and, and they have better players. I've got the Gaff Attack uh, snapping these game win streak. I've got the Gaff Attack winning this one, 122 to 104. Moving on to our next matchup, we have only for the boss versus squad underestimated. All righty. Only for the boss, uh, couldn't quite stand up to that uh, scoring barrage um, brought on by the Mean Machine. But they did have a pretty good week. Anytime you can score um, over 120 points, you had a good week, despite whether uh, you win or lose. Uh, Patrick Mahomes continues to be that guy. Carlos Hyde was a very, very pleasant surprise last week. And, and Hyde is a guy who I think, um, uh, when we look back, is going to be somebody that's going to be a major player throughout the season because of now the, the uh, presence of Baker Mayfield. He's a more traditional quarterback, and I think that their offense is going to be much more on schedule, and that's going to um, help Carlos Hyde out. Stephon Diggs has got to get back into the groove of things. After that huge explosion, he completely disappeared last week. So the boss is going to need him back um, to help the receiving core. Obviously, Tyreek Hill uh, didn't have as huge a game as he usually had. Mahomes was really spreading the ball around. Um, and the better Mahomes get, the more that's going to happen, and, and, and the boss may not be as dependent can't or may not be able to depend as much on uh, his Chiefs players as uh, before because it looks like Mahomes is a guy who's very judicious with the football. Uh, Marvin Jones continues to be a, a solid play and the Chiefs I, I like them against uh, the Denver Broncos on Monday night so I, I think that the boss does have a pretty good advantage there. On underestimated side uh, they got the huge upset over the Argonauts uh, last week and that was thanks mainly to Saquon Barkley and uh and um, Christian McCaffrey. Those two guys are really becoming a household backfield in the PPL. Uh, Barkley and uh, McCaffrey are great receivers out of the backfield. And McCaffrey started to show a little bit of that run in between the tackles uh, uh, chops. He, he ended up running for 184 yards. I think that I'm pretty sure that's his career high. And he was highly impressive. And, and, uh, and, and the squad underestimated was pretty impressive too. Although I will say that, I mean, they only got to 110. Uh, Kirk Cousins was a huge disappointment. I believe he was negative for most of the game until he started hitting all the bonuses because of the, the massive amount of pass attempts they had to take because of the uh, score. Um, Cousins should bounce back, um, being that I think that they're going to take the Rams a little more serious. I think they got throttled because they didn't take the Bills serious. And, you know, that can be detrimental to your health. Um, other plays, uh, I think the Deshaun Jackson play uh, is going to die down just because he's so big play dependent that if he doesn't get that big play, He's really kind of a wasted play. Uh, but but the squad has some options. Unfortunately, they did lose Jimmy Garoppolo for the season. Um, a very devastating blow to the 49er franchise. And I'm sure it was devastating to squad uh, personally as well. Uh, you know, but life goes on and, and we're going to have to see, you know, if they can adjust to that. Not that Garoppolo was of, of much consequence being that Cousins was the starter. But it just always hurts to lose a guy that could have been um, a, a, a decent option. That being said, this matchup uh, is probably the closest one to call of the weekend. Um, squad underestimated could really make some noise with a win here. Uh, but I think that only for the boss is going to get this. I got only for the boss winning this matchup 110 to 105. In a very, very close matchup, I got the boss pulling it out against squad underestimated.